He was one of the key architects of that Iran nuke deal. Let's bring in Congressman Ron DeSantis, a Republican from Florida, and one of the lawmakers who sent the letter seeking answers. This is unbelievable. Congressman? Yeah, I mean, look, Harris, uh, Hezbollah is one of the most lethal terrorist groups in the world, and they have American blood on their hands. You go back to 1983, uh, the bombing of the Marine Corps barracks in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, that was done at the hands of Hezbollah. Um, they were active in supporting Shia militia in Iraq, targeting U.S. troops. And, of course, they're one of the biggest problems in places like Syria, and in terms of the groups that our ally Israel worries about. So to do anything that would give them a free pass in either drug running or money laundering, that is a major, major issue. Now, we've known from the beginning, uh, Ben Rhodes said that the Iran deal was the Obamacare of the second term, and they did make everything subservient to getting that deal, that sheet of paper that they could wave around. Uh, and I think a lot of us in the Congress realized that they were going out of their way to bend over backwards to placate Iran. But I don't think any of us thought they went quite this far. Yeah, you know, so one thing that pops into my mind is, is this another instance of the Obama administration looking at a terror group and saying they're JV-like? You know, let's underestimate the damage that they can do so that we can kind of compartmentalize. Is that what we're looking at? Because that's some dangerous stuff. We've learned some deadly lessons by calling ISIS JV to begin with. Well, if you remember, as the admin when the administration was in its uh, early years, you had people like John Brennan, who was the counterterrorism guy, later became the CIA director. Um, he was saying, look, we've got to look at Hezbollah, and we've got to try to separate the good from the bad within Hezbollah. What does Hezbollah. that mean? It, 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 well, it doesn't mean much to most people who, who understand terrorism and understand that this is a, a group that has very nefarious purposes in mind. But nevertheless, that was a view. Um, and so did that naive view play into it? Or was it, hey, at this point we realize Hezbollah is bad, but we're willing to empower them in order to get this deal? And remember, Harris, even after the deal, when you had the $150 billion in sanctions relief and then you had the U.S. government airlifting in mm -hmm. pallets of cash over a billion dollars, Secretary of State John Kerry acknowledged that some of that money was going to go to fund terrorism. And so you I may have that. a situation where in order to do the Iran deal on the front end, by deep sixing these prosecutions, you were letting money flow to Hezbollah. But then on the back end, by getting all the cash, that ends up going to the Revolutionary Guard Corps and to groups like Hezbollah. So it could be empowering Hezbollah on both sides of this Iran deal. Congressman, when you look at what Ambassador Nikki Haley put together, you had that poster behind her at the U.N. and it showed the warehouses where weapons were being held and then sent on to the Yemeni rebels to fight a war there. Uh, and the markings of Iran on that weaponry. It was, and I quote the ambassador, like there was a made in Iran sticker on some of the stuff. I mean, how does that fit into this conversation? Because that had to, in my estimation at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, some of that had to be going on during the last administration. President Trump's only been in office for less than a year. Oh, without question. I mean, I think what you've seen is this Iran deal was flawed just on its terms because you know, you're not dealing with their missile program, which would deliver a nuclear weapon, and you don't have access to the military sites, which is where they would most likely build one of these weapons. But then apart from that, as the deal was being negotiated, and then after the deal was being negotiated, the Iranian regime increased its belligerent behavior throughout the Middle East. Yes, in places like Yemen. Yes, in Lebanon with supporting Hezbollah and Syria uh, and elsewhere in the Middle East. And that has been a constant. So Ben Rhodes created the echo chamber saying, hey, the Iranians are changing. This is a once in a generation opportunity. Let's give them these concessions so we can start working together. In wow. fact, they, even they knew that wasn't true and the proof's been in the pudding because the behavior has gotten worse since the Iran deal. All right, we always talk about accountability. Before I let you go, I, I'm, I'm wondering about punishment because accountability is one thing. You can point fingers at people, but, but this potentially put us in harm's way. Would you say, and what's the punishment? Well, look, we've got to get all the facts. I mean, I think there's a lot of troubling allegations. We've got to get this. We're going to have to bring in and do a lot of depositions. We're going to have to get a lot of documents. I think the Justice Department is likely to want to um, help work with us, I think, because it's a new administration. But we've got to get those facts and then see where they lead. But I think one fundamental question is, if this stuff was deep-sixed, 
who at Justice did it, and did, were they acting on their own volition, my instinct would be no, that it would come from somewhere in the White House. And so obviously you have President Obama, you have people like Ben Rhodes, Valerie Jarrett. We just got to get the answers to those questions. All right, Congressman DeSantis of the great state of Florida. Enjoy the sunshine down there over the holiday. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Wow. Tough topic right before the holiday, right? And an effort now to halt.